What's up everybody, it's Man of Low Moral Fiber here. My name's Luke, and in this video we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I've recently been going back and playing some of the games that I had played through as a child, and I've truly been enjoying it. Now this particular game is called Outlaws, and it was released by LucasArts in 1997. And it hurts me a little bit to say that because LucasArts unfortunately no longer releases video games. But in the time that they did, they released some of my favorite video games of all time, including the Monkey Island series and this, Outlaws. Obviously my YouTube channel name alludes to the Monkey Island series. We'll get to that another time. This particular game, Outlaws, was the first first-person shooter game that I ever played, and obviously because of that, the nostalgia value for me is personally very, very high. However, even without that nostalgia factor, I would consider this to still be an excellent game. It's got great gameplay, an awesome story, and a truly exceptional western score. Now I wanted to give you guys a quick look at the gameplay there before I showed you this opening cutscene. I felt as if I had to show this opening cutscene so that you guys would understand some of the story. This is where we first get introduced to our protagonist and playable character here. We are that guy Marshall on the horse. And this is the introduction here to the game. You see that you have a wife and you have a daughter here. You're about to go to the store and pick up some stuff. That flowery water. So he also Rose mentions water. here that this yeah, is marriage and that this is a little bit coach. different than Marshall what he James may be Anderson used to do. You kind of pick up some of the this context clues here that this he wasn't marriage. always this kind of man. And once he gets to the store, you'll learn a little bit more about that. Obviously, the daughter here is pretty young. Now, this is how a lot of games used to do it. They would have a rather lengthy opening cutscene. And here's where we're going to meet our main antagonist, or one of the main antagonists here. So these guys want Marshall's farm. That's our character's name, I guess, is Marshall. So, obviously this guy seems pretty creepy and stuff. And so when I was six years old, because this game was released in the first half of 1997, this particular story was rather chilling to me. Um, we'll get to what actually happens here in a you know, couple minutes, but um, it was scary to me, you know, when I was six years old. And maybe this game was a little bit mature content-wise for a six-year-old, but I happened to be playing it at six years old. Now... This game, it came out on PC only, I believe, and I had a PC that could run it at the time. Now, I had got this PC from one of my dad's friends who ended up going into the army and going overseas, and so he had said, hey, you know, you've got a son, right, Terry? You think, you know, he likes video games and stuff? And I had played a couple video games with my dad and my dad's friend. You know, we had played some stuff. He, had a, he actually had a couple computers. He was kind of a real big video game enthusiast at the time, PC gaming enthusiast back in 1996, earlier than that, you know, so he was one Sarah, of the real early adopters, the one of the OGs in the mid-90s and stuff, probably even before that, but I happened to know him when I was four or five, etc. And I remember thinking how cool his computer setup was back then. He had four different PCs, I think, that were all connected via a LAN, and yes. he would invite people over Good and day. have like four-player battles and stuff like that. He's I thought it was amazing. And he when he left to go overseas, no more, he let Mr. us have Anderson. one of these computers, at least while Who he was overseas. And it well, was we incredible for me because I was able to have we made on the ability to play basically any PC game that it was out at the time. Man, and that was absolutely it, phenomenal for me. Slim. So as we see doctor. here, the doctor is kind, uh, yes. kind of intimidating you your never, wife here. Basically being very scary. And when I was six years old... I watched this like one time, and every time after that I would skip it because it was scary to me. All of this was kind of scary to me, you know, like, and obviously this cutscene here is in 4x3 aspect ratio, that's why I've put those uh, bars on the side there. It took me a minute to figure out how to do that, actually, um, but I noticed that that's how, like, ESPN and other places do it for content that was 4x3 that they're now showing on 16x9 widescreen. I hope that's acceptable for you guys. I did get the game running in 16x9, 1920x1080, though, um, which you obviously saw at the very start of the uh, video. So this gives you some more context here on the uh, character's backstory. This guy's telling... You know, hey, we miss you being the sheriff and all of that. Um, it was a big loss for the county when you became a farmer. So he's at the general store picking all of this stuff up that his wife wanted or that the family wanted while his wife is being threatened by that doctor guy back at the house. So that's a real shame. And like I said, I never met an innocent man. Oh, this is actually a good quote. He says, you never shot an innocent man. He says, I've never met an innocent man. I thought that was a really chilling quote. 
Um, anywho, um, this is, you know, how games used to do it. They would have a rather lengthy opening cutscene to kind of convey the story. Um, because back then, it was more difficult to do things. Obviously, machines weren't as powerful. You didn't have as much everything. There wasn't as much video processing, RAM, CPU processing, any of that. And so you see here in the shadows that this guy is beating up your wife, this crazy, creepy doctor guy. And he says some creepy things here as well, and you're you're out here, you know, buying perfume for her. And they've got your daughter, too. And this pissed me off. I Like, when I was six, I couldn't understand that there could be people this evil. It... It truly scared me. It gave me nightmares. This was something that was very, very frightening to me. You know, like, I just couldn't imagine someone coming and taking my daughter. You know, like, I, obviously I was sick, so I was thinking more like, that's my sister, you know, like a, a four-year-old sister or something just being abducted and kidnapped. And that the idea that something could be that evil was truly frightening to me at six years old. I, you know, like, maybe now you guys might see this as kind of cliche, obviously. They're, this isn't the only Western that kind of has this plot, you know. No. A farmer has uh, a plot of land and someone wants it, and they just kind of come through and burn it all down to the ground and take it and stuff. But, you know, when I was six, and still to this day, like I said, I recently just went through and rebeat the game. The story is excellent to me. I find this story to be absolutely Anna, phenomenal. James. So your wife dies here, and this pissed me off, dude, like... When I was six, and even just now, when I went through and replayed it over the last week or so, I was like, damn, it's mean of them to go kill your hot red-headed wife like that. That sucks. And so it bothered me, you know what I mean? And so here, this is where our character, our protagonist, um, is no longer going to be living this simple farmer's life. He's going to go back to what he was doing, um, being a sheriff type guy and killing bad guys. As you see, his house burns to the ground there. The only thing left standing is that chimney. Here he is burying his wife. That chimney's still there. There was obviously that tree um, where his daughter was swinging as well. So he, now he's got to go find his daughter, obviously. And this compelled me to play the game when I was a child. I absolutely needed to save that daughter. I thought that if I didn't go through and, you know, re save the daughter that in my mind I was doing bad because she was still trapped in that virtual world and I wanted to get her out I wanted to save her it was something that truly you know stuck with me and like throughout the game every time I it was hard you know and like I didn't want to play it anymore because it was difficult and I was having trouble with it I was compelled to go forward and save that daughter you know here we find the doll she Sarah has possibly come through here this her name's Sarah and so we're going to have to go into this small town here and kill a bunch of people and then, uh, you know, find some clues about her. So this was the first level here. And at six years old, this was very difficult to me. And here I am playing on the medium difficulty setting. This was back when games were truly hard. And I'm not talking like Ultimate Vault Hunter mode hard. No, they were truly hard. If you died, you fucking died and you went back to the start of the level. And that's how it worked. And so I remembered some of this. I was surprised that I remembered some of the mechanics of some of these levels as I was playing through it because it had been so long for me since I had gone through and played some of these levels but like the amount of times I've died on this level um, even when I was playing easy mode because on easy mode you would die um, and like just flat out die and you'd have to start the level over but like the amount of times I've died on this level is probably one of the highest of any levels in video gaming because keep in mind, this was the absolute first first-person shooter that I ever played. But I was just thinking about it the other day. I was playing some older games that I had played through, and I was like, oh my god, I have to see if Outlaws is still working. Like, if I can get it working on my PC. And I went to goodoldgames.com, GOG.com, and it worked right away. I was able to get it working in 1920 by 1080p resolution. The only thing that wasn't working for me was save game. And I was able to get that working by running it in Windows 95 compatibility mode. And so then I got game save working and all of that, and that was really excellent. And so, like, um, the reason I got this game, right, is because my mother knew I liked some LucasArts games. And she, she knew I really liked Star Wars. And so we went to a store one day, and this game was there. And it said LucasArts. And my mom really didn't know what it was. I don't think she would have liked me playing it at the time. In fact, later she saw me playing it at the time and very much did not like it. And this was a little bit after I had already got truly invested in the game. Um, but so she saw it was LucasArts. She knew that was related to Star Wars. And so she trusted it, you know. 
And that's why I got to play this game. I, I had that computer that my dad's friend had left with me. That was truly one of the first, like, amazingly generous things that someone I didn't know did for me. You know, like, well, I knew him, you know what I mean? But, like, he didn't have to leave me, a six-year-old kid, with a PC that could play every game that was available. That was something that I found truly exceptional. Um, it was, you know, really cool. And, like, there wasn't as much a difference between your high-end PC then and your low-end PC. They were all relatively the same range, but the one I had, and like, I don't know the exact specs, but it was a relatively high-end PC. Like I said, this guy was an enthusiast, and he went overseas to do some like military contracting work. He worked for the government at the time um, with my dad and stuff, and then he had went overseas to do some like contract work, and he made a lot of money doing that, I believe, because when he came back, he just let us keep that computer. He's like, oh yeah, that computer's old now, I'm just going to buy new computers. And, like, so all four of those computers that he had loaned out to people, he's like, ah, oh, just keep them. You know what I mean? I'm going to buy four new computers. I went overseas, made a shitload of money. And that was cool because then I got to go over to his house and play more LAN parties and stuff. And, like, people asked when I became a PC gamer. That There was no becoming a PC gamer to me. I was born into it because of that situation. And that was really awesome. That is something that I am very, very, very thankful for. Anywho. We're going to goof around and play through this entire first level, and I hope you guys have been enjoying this video so far, been enjoying this little story here on some of my background and introduction into PC gaming and into first-person shooters. Now, this game is really cool. As you can see right now, um, when I recorded this, it was a little bit after I had played through the, it, the entire game. So I had got kind of good at the mechanics again, you know what I mean, and I had actually memorize this level again and when I say memorized it again I actually kind of had it memorized beforehand but as you can see I went up to you know and even though it was like almost 20 years ago now I still remember some of it and you know that's a blessing and a curse that I ha happen to have the great memory that I have sometimes it's really nice and sometimes it's a shame because uh, you can't ever really forget some of the stupid things you've done. And some games like Monkey Island aren't really replayable for me because I remember every single puzzle. And that's a little bit weird. I remember every single line of dialogue almost. And uh, sometimes, you know what I mean, it can be a little bit irritating to have a great memory. I'm not trying to like belittle my, uh, I guess you would call it a blessing here. I, I do very much appreciate the fact that I have a good memory, but like all things, there's... There's a positive and a negative to it, and I'm just happy that I was able to remember, you know, a lot of stuff that I did need to remember, but obviously there are some things I wish I could forget as well. Anyway, um, we had just picked up that key in that, uh, in that barn, and that's kind of how each level works. There are keys that you need to go and get that allow you to get into certain doors, and without that you can't progress into the level and stuff. And so you saw me there going around the building and kind of uh, poking through some of the windows there with my rifle so that we could clear out some of the guys in here. Now this game actually has a rather varied selection of weapons, and in this level, the first level, we only get to use the rifle and the pistol. Now there are obviously cheat codes where you could unlock every weapon and stuff like that, and as a kid I did have to use some of the cheat codes to get through this game because it was that difficult to me at the time. Again, the first first person shooter that I ever played. Now, um, the controls are fairly intuitive. It's a little bit weird to me that jump is on the E button and spacebar is open doors. Um, it seems like those would be reversed, but other than that, it's, it's fairly simple. Oh, and the other thing, the light the lantern is on L, which is a little bit weird. They could have put that on like G or something that would have made it still left hand. But every time I have to light the lantern or every time I lit the lantern going through the game, I thought it was a little bit weird that I had to move over to the L key. Obviously they're rebindable. I didn't take the time to rebind them though. And so you're kind of seeing how the game works right now. I carry ammo. You have to reload the guns manually, by the way, and reloading is right click. If you run out of ammo and you try to fire again, your character does not automatically reload the gun. I think automatic reload is a very shitty feature in video games, but unfortunately it's, it's never going to go away again. And the cheat code to enable automatic reload in this game is OL Wimpy. Like, and I thought that was really funny. Looking back on it, I, I found that to be rather hilarious, that the cheat code for automatic reload was wimpy. So um, this guy, he glitched out a little bit for me there. It's not bad. Now, it took me a long time, you know, to get to where we're about to be in the game, get that second key, and then get to this underground tunnel. Like, as a child, this took me 
a long time to work to. You know, I had to learn how to play first person shooters. I had to learn where to go, memorize all of these enemy layouts and stuff. And then I had to get to this tunnel. Now this enemy that we're about to get to, he kicked my ass a bunch as a child. He has a shotgun and uh, he's one of the first shotgun enemies you face. There's one in that first ranch house we go to. But if you get too close to those guys, which was kind of my strategy as a child, like get really close to things and then shoot at them so that I couldn't miss, um, his shotgun is ex um, exceptionally powerful at close range and it will kill you. It will kill you in like one hit. And so I died to him quite a bit. So I'm just running back here to get some health because I want some health knowing that we're about to get to that second ranch house and there will be a lot of stuff in there as well and that's just kind of the way I play you know I'm very deliberate and I like to keep all of my supplies if I can and stuff and so by pressing Z you unlock or you not you don't unlock it but you utilize uh, super fire which is uh, there's a guy right behind me right now I, was, I didn't see him until then uh, but that's where he like you know fans the hammer and really shoots at it you'll see me do that here when we open the door now this is actually where I got that scene from at the very start of this video and I always thought super fire was super sweet you know with the pistol you just shoot it all super quick and stuff I thought that was awesome that was really cool I don't know what the sheriff badge does to this day but I do know there's one in every level and I loved collecting them so now we're gonna go up into the second ranch house now this is the one it's very near where we started out over to the left there is where the spawn point is in this level and it's it's kind of weird because I was always trying to get into this door as a child that you can't get into without the key and the key is actually upstairs in this building that's why you have to go underground and uh, get over here and stuff and so I'm clearing out this ranch house as you can see there are a ton of bad cowboys and this was something I thought was cool you know I rode horses and stuff as a child I still do on occasion when I have time and I'm in the right place and everything and so that's that door that was on that front porch at you know very near the start of this level and so when I had first got into this house I thought it was awesome I thought you know like I almost beat this game you know what I mean I thought this was the entire game as a child I didn't know there were going to be levels beyond this I thought my daughter because you know I saw the little doll outside I thought my daughter was gonna be upstairs and I was gonna save her that's not the case this game's actually fairly lengthy the main campaign anyway and then after that it actually has all of these side missions and an entire side mode as well and so that's actually really cool and it actually made the game fairly lengthy and stuff and I thought that was really cool this game I don't know how many people would consider it groundbreaking I'm unsure how many you know contemporary games there were out there at the time and what some of those games offered technologically and stuff but this game to me it really set the standard for what I was to look for in a first-person shooter going forward it it's absolutely amazing to me and it you know like I said the nostalgia factor is super high for me but I would still recommend this game to everybody to this day if you haven't played this game please try it like it'll run on any PC these days obviously um, but if you haven't played it yet it's on good old games it, it cost me like six dollars I bought it for like eight of my friends um, you know because that, the whole PayPal money thing, it's all wizardry to me anyway. Well, not really, you know what I mean? I do transfer most of the PayPal money I get uh, to my actual bank account, but I usually leave like 100 or so a month um, in that PayPal account, and I just spend it willy-nilly on video games and stuff, in case you're wondering what I kind of spend some of that YouTube money on. Um, it goes primarily to video games for me and my friends as well. And if you haven't played this game, I would truly recommend it. Another cool thing is all of these secret areas. See, like this was a little secret area. And now this boss that we're about to get to up here, he took me a terrible amount of time to beat because keep in mind, this guy will kill you very, very quickly. He will kill you super quick. So, um, like he killed me a couple times here even when I went through and replayed it. So, um, like as a kid there, when I first found that cabinet with the stick of dynamite in it, my strategy for a long time was I'm going to throw this stick of dynamite all the way over to him and then I'm going to blow him up. And it actually worked for me once. It did. It, it worked for me one time. And I was like, that's the only way I'll ever be able to beat this guy. Cause he has like a super overpowered shotgun that just absolutely eats you. And it's crazy. But I kill him here and then we'll see the little outro cutscene. And, um... You know, if you guys want to see some more levels in this game, I can probably do that because I truly enjoy this game. 
and we'll see the little outro cutscene here again. And so, as always, guys, I know this is a little bit different, but I do thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. If you haven't yet no, taken the time to please subscribe, please do so. I'd appreciate that as well. Um, if you liked this video, let me know. I know this is a lot different than what we usually do here on this channel, but it's a game that I truly enjoy, and like I said, I highly recommend it to all of you. And so when I had first got to this cutscene, I was like, oh, okay, so this game's gonna go a lot longer. <laughs> and so, it was really cool. One more time, guys, thanks for watching, and I do hope to catch you next time. Bye, guys. It's a shame he didn't listen.